In this lesson, we will learn how to use Cutting Master 4. Created for users who design in Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw, it provides a simple and effective way of cutting on a GraphTech cutting plotter. Once the design is in Cutting Master 4, there are many useful options for manipulating the design prior to cutting them, such as resizing, scaling, tiling, and adding weed borders. This is also where registration marks are generated on the design for print and cut jobs. You should have received a separate DVD that contains the Cutting Master 4 plugin. When installing Cutting Master 4, it looks for either Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw to install the plugin. So prior to installing Cutting Master 4, make sure that one of these design software are already present on your computer. Remove any previous versions of Cutting Master before downloading Cutting Master 4. The cutter will need to be set to GPGL mode. If you're not sure how to do this, look in your manual. To install the software, insert the installation DVD into your computer. If you are using a Windows platform, this installation application should appear. Click on Setup Cutting Master 4. Select the setup language and then click OK. On the welcome screen, click Next. Read and accept the software license agreement. Choose the destination folder the software will be installed into. Select the features you'd like to install. Select the program folder where the shortcut for the software will appear. By default, a new folder will be created for the product. Click Next to begin installing the software. Finally, select Finish. To install Cutting Master 4 on a Mac, you will first need to log in as an administrator or have administrator rights before the software can be installed. Open the DVD by clicking on the icon. Open the Cutting Master 4 folder. Double click the Cutting Master 4 signed package icon. When the installer starts, click on Continue. From this point, follow the step by step instructions. Master 4 is installed, the first step is to set up the driver. This is done by opening up the Cutting Master 4 queue application. This is a standalone that is used as a queue for jobs sent from the cut plot application. When opened for the first time, it will prompt for a driver to be installed. Scrolling down the list, we can locate the GraphTech cutter model is connected to our computer, and then click Next. The port can be chosen in this window. There is a choice of different ports to communicate with our cutter. The list shows serial, USB, TCIP, and file. In this case, we'll choose the USB port. Once the port is selected, click OK. Keep in mind that these settings, including the driver, can always be changed later on. To check if the interface is correct, click on the Setup pull-down menu and click Test Cut. The cutter will have a quick movement indicating that the software is communicating with the cutter. Now that Cutting Master 4 is installed, let's review the plugin. There are two components to Cutting Master 4. The first is the plugin module that will be part of the Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw applications. This is where the final design is sent so that final adjustments can be made, such as size and orientation, prior to sending it to a GraphTech cutter. The second component is the job queue, where jobs are sent to the cutter. To demonstrate how the Cutting Master 4 plugin works in Illustrator, here we have a simple design that is completed. 
Now click on the file pull down menu, hover the mouse point over Cutting Master 4, and go to Cut Plot. Let's stop there for a moment and switch to Corel Draw because it works a little differently. To access Cutting Master 4, click on the Application Launcher. When we click on the Application Launcher, at the bottom of the list is Cutting Master 4. We can hover over it and click Cut Plot. Within the Cutting Master 4 Cut Plot application, output settings can be configured and adjusted prior to sending the design to the cutter. While we will be using the Mac version of Cutting Master 4, the settings are essentially the same when using a Windows-based computer. At the top is where a GraphTech cutter driver you plan to use can be selected. In this case, we will be using the FC8600. The Properties button will allow changes to be made to the driver itself, but this is generally not necessary unless there is a change in communication ports. Up above are the five tabs, General, Layering, Panels, Advanced, and Registration Marks. Each tab has their own settings. For instance, the Layering tab has all the settings related to layer established with Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw. Some of the other tabs will be discussed in later lessons. For now, let's return to the General tab, which contains the most commonly used settings. When the driver is selected, the media size here defaults to the largest cutting area available for that cutter automatically. In this case, the media size is set to roll, so the size is set to the largest width possible and the length to the longest, which is over 1900 inches. The window to the right is the preview window, where the design is displayed. The white area represents the cutting area on the current cutter, in this case the FC8600 cutter. When adjustments are made to the settings in this area to the left, such as media size, they are reflected in the design in relation to the cut area. The media size has different preset sizes to choose from. Clicking on the little side arrow, we are given a list of different ANSI and ISO sizes. If we choose ANSI D, the white space changes to represent an ANSI D size, but notice that the design is adjusted. The design has not changed in size, the preview shows how large it would be on an ANSI D size paper. The media size can be customized to the media that we plan to use. For instance, if we had a sheet of material that was 24 inches wide by 20 inches tall, we could first click on the side arrows and select User Defined. We can then change the width to 24 and the height to 20. The white area in the preview window will change in shape and the design changes to reflect how large it would be on a 24 by 20 stock of media allowing us to see how it will fit. Let's switch back to Roll. The button just to the right is helpful when you're uncertain how much cutting area is available. Pressing it will retrieve from the cutter the actual cutting area of the media. Just below the media size settings are the settings for the job size. These settings will adjust the overall size of the design or job. Here the size of the job design can be adjusted by size or percentage. Fit to media will do just that. It fits the job to the media. The proportional checkbox will keep the values proportionate so that when either size value, height or width is adjusted, the other values will adjust with it to keep the size proportionate, as opposed to stretching the design. The job can be repositioned within the media by using these two values. 
Positioning can be done visually in the preview area as well just by dragging. Then, if this button, the interactive button, is pressed, as the design is repositioned in the preview area, the tool head will move accordingly, allowing us to see how the tool head will be positioned on the cutter in real time. If you're unsure if the job is going to fit within the material's edges, pressing Show Me will make the cutter move the head in a rectangular motion to the size of the job, giving us a visual of how large the design will be when it is plotted. This button allows the design to be aligned on the cutter. This is often useful if the vinyl or media has a previous cut and you need to avoid that area. The next button will rotate the job in specific directions. The last button mirrors or flips the job. Copies can be specified here as well as the distance between each copy. Selection only will only display an object selected with Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw. If we were to return to Adobe Illustrator, select the word vitamin, return to Cutting Master 4, and click on Selection only, this will show the word vitamin only. Down in the lower left are the zoom buttons. If we click on this far right button, this will fill the screen with the design. We can then click on the Show All button to see the full media size. Finally, Hold on List will hold the job in the queue until it is released or sent. To see how this works, let's click on the checkbox and send the job by clicking Send. This will send the design job to be processed in the Cutting Master 4 queue application. This can be immediately seen in the box in the upper right corner. Here is where all the jobs in the queue can be viewed, along with their status. Let's switch to the actual Cutting Master 4 queue by clicking this button here. Here in the queue, the job is on hold. Several tasks can be done. These five buttons at the top of the window have operations relating to the jobs in the queue. The trash will delete a job in the queue. The stop sign stops the jobs from being sent to the cutter. The send job button will send or resume the jobs in the queue. Save will save the job to a plot file, which can later on be opened and resent by using the open button. In this case, we want to click the send job button and this will send it to the GraphTech cutter.